Hi, and welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and very excited to have you here today. We're going to be having a conversation about love, sex, and relationships. Sorry we're not delivering. <laughs> Just a joke, because those are some of my favorite subjects, and I really love them because they're kind of edgy when we talk to the right person, and I have the right person here today. I, myself, am a visibility expert out into the world. I do media. And specifically, I help you write a page turner book, take that book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and also learn how to be interviewed, how to get results, and how to be exquisite on your own. Don't even need a publicist if you do it right. So entrepreneurs love those kind of programs. I'm in the middle of teaching the ultimate visibility formula, loving my class, loving the people who come and how hard they're willing to work to get where they want to go. And Dare to Dream is basically the number one transformation conversation on podcast. We've been out here for 12 years, award-winning, syndicated, and as always, it is a pleasure to engage with you and hear your feedback on the shows. So today is no exception, and I want to first thank my sponsor, Dr. Dane Heer, H-E-E-R, and Access Consciousness, for supporting and sponsoring the show. They deliver energy healing products and workshops all around the world. So pretty much anywhere, their books are in your language and their workshops are in your town. Check them out, drdanehere.com as well as accessconsciousness.com. So today I've got the amazing Dr. Laura Berman here. She is the world's leading expert in sex, love, and relationships, and she's going to talk to us about how to reach your full potential in these subjects. She earned two master's degrees and a PhD degree from New York University. She helps individuals and couples to love and be loved. And in addition to her clinical practice, Dr. Berman is the award-winning host of the nationally syndicated show, Uncovered Radio with Dr. Laura Berman. She's been honored with the Gracie Award, which I know about, that's amazing, for Best Talk Radio Host, and recently was named one of Radio Inc.'s most influential women in radio. That's awesome, congratulations. Dr. Berman is also a best-selling New York Times author of eight books and hosted several television shows, including Owns in the Bedroom with Dr. Laura Berman, the Dr. Laura Berman Show, and Sexual Healing on Showtime. Dr. Berman is a regular expert on love and relationships on TV and has written media and is on the advisory board of the Dr. Oz Show. You can find out more all about her and her books and her workshops at drlauraberman.com. Dr. Laura, welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm so glad to be with you. Me too. You know, I met you at your house. Mm -hmm. It was auspicious. And mm -hmm. in a few minutes of, of, of our beginning conversation, you said things so cutting edge. And I thought this woman is a pistol. Oh. I cannot wait to have that kind of conversation with you because yeah. it seems you're willing to go there. Oh yeah, I'm totally willing to go there, and I really stink at small talk, so that's why, you know, I, I really have a hard time with it, so I just go straight there with people, which is why, and also I could tell you would go straight there. I think we literally, like, had just met, and we were going all the way in. We're going all the way in, and it's amazing, too, speaking of going all the way in, you just wrote a book called Quantum Love, yeah. right? which is interesting because quantum is speaking about particles and love is, this is taking things on a whole new level. I'd love you to talk a little bit about your new book. Yeah, I'm so, you know, this is, I've written nine books and this is by far my most personal and my most favorite. Didn't ever expect to write it, that this would be the subject that I wrote on. Um, and I kind of stumbled upon it during, as we often do, necessity, you know, is the mother of invention. I stumbled upon it when I was in a really dark, the concepts, when I was in a really dark period in my own life. And as with everything, every, you know, my whole, mon my whole mantra in my life and what I try to teach other people about our difficult times is, you know, you heal, you learn, you teach. That's what mm -hmm. life is about, you know, especially for me, heal, learn, teach, heal, learn, teach, or maybe heal, learn, help, or heal, learn aid or, you know, fill in your blank. Right. Um, but I, uh, so that's how I came upon the whole field of quantum physics and, um, 
trying to kind of heal myself. And then I realized, because for me, everything is about sex and everything is about relationships. I immediately started playing with it myself in my own relationships with my kids and with my husband, the things I was learning, because I like to kind of systematize things. And, um, and, then when I, and then when I was amazed at what started happening there, then I put together a system for my couples I treat. And then that's what led to quantum love. So quantum love is really about applying the basic principles of quantum physics, which is the science behind what we know of as the law of attraction or the secret or things like that. But applying the principles of quantum physics specifically to your relationship, whether you're in a relationship or whether you're looking for love, because the bottom line is what most people you know, don't realize, and I know you understand this, Debbie, is that um, our bodies are just pure energy, even though they seem solid, and we're emitting an energy, you know, it holds an energetic frequency that is unique to us, that's constantly shifting and changing, but we're all affecting each other's frequencies. We're like human tuning forks that are constantly matching each other. So when all of us are in a room together, we're kind of all finding the happy medium, unless one of us is holding her frequency. Mm -hmm. And most of us don't understand that. And it's so easy to do. And so what I got into and started teaching people is how can you change and move with your body's frequency using your thoughts and beliefs, which is what sets your energetic frequency, to create the love life and the relationship and the sex life you want. And it's like, it's been mind blowing to me because for someone who's been a therapist for 25 years, to be able to do couples therapy with one person now is kind of amazing because once you change what's going on inside you, everything else starts to change as well for the Got better. It. Yeah, 100%. This is matrix stuff, yes. right? So you're at the core of whatever's going on in the moment. This changes all the threads that go out into the world completely change. And I love that idea that you can deal with one person and mm -hmm. alter their world and relationship. And I remember the epiphany I had, I kind of was like, whoa, because um, I've been playing with this and playing with my body's energy and noticing what it felt like to be in what I you know, ended up calling home frequency, which is a very natural place. It's sort of when you're in that higher frequency place, which is going to create more of what you want in your life versus more of ego frequency, I call it, where you're in those lower frequencies of despair, anger, resentment, hopelessness, frustration, guilt, shame, you know, those are all the lower frequency emotions versus optimism, hope, joy, love, you know, um, excitement, right? So I was playing with this and um, I was t talking to my husband and he was upset with me about something. It wasn't a major deal, but he was mad at me. And, you know, up until that point, even though I would, of course, counsel my couples Otherwise, I, I'm, as my husband often says, I don't always practice what I preach. Um, so I was listening to him complain about whatever it was that I'd supposedly done. I don't even remember what the details were. And, as, and I was listening to respond, which is what most, you know, many of us do who are a little defensive, right? So I'm listening to him thinking, I didn't say that. I didn't, you know, and I'm getting my response already, which was my normal pattern. Like, what is he, why, how, why is he accusing me of this? I didn't mean that. And, I, and that didn't really happen like that. You know how we do that. So... I suddenly stopped and I was like, wait a minute, you've been playing with this. What would happen if you moved into you know, home frequency now? You moved and you just didn't say anything. Like, cause I do experiments on him all the time. He has no idea. He's like my guinea pig. So I move into home frequency, move my body into that frequency. And I can show you at some point during this conversation an easy way to do that. Um, and then I was thinking, you know, as I did that, uh, you often match it with thoughts. So I'm thinking, okay, here's this guy. Yeah, I'm pissed off at him. He's being kind of an ass right now, but I, you know, I love him. I can see this as a blip in the whole trajectory of our relationship, you know, and I wasn't changing my face. I was still sitting there perfectly still listening, but instead of listening to respond, I was moving my body into a different frequency. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing about my husband and really the reason, one of the main reasons I fell in love with him is that he's so freaking smart, but it's, so frustrating because I am used to being able to run circles around the men in my life up until that point. And I, you know, by the end of the conversation, they were apologizing to me for something I had done to them. But this one will not let me manipulate him to save my life, which I love and hate at the same time. And he also, I, even though he's not a lawyer, could probably argue in the Supreme Court because he's just so good at that. But this is what happened is we're having this conversation. He's telling me and I'm now moving myself into home frequency and all of a sudden this man who this never happens to loses his train of thought 
Mm-hmm. He just kind of looks at me and his whole body relaxes and he sits down next to me and the whole energy between us changes and I rest my head on his shoulder and we start having like the actual conversation that we probably should have had. And then I was thinking, okay, now this is interesting. And that's why I call it a Jedi mind trick for your relationship because as a woman with three boys and a husband, all of who are extremely high maintenance and have their own opinions and you know wouldn't necessarily listen to my words at all, whatever I want, it lines up for me when I move myself into that frequency. Wow. Yeah. So I I do want to go there. Um, (laughs) I want to say that I had something happen recently and I want to explore that because it's akin to what you're saying, but I'm clear what you're saying is really deeper. I, I have had a recurring something, something with my boyfriend and it's, you know, on some level, it's all never that important, but on some level it is, it is. Yes. And it, right. It just sort of doesn't get resolved. And so it's frustrating because I just want to be heard. And then I received news one night very recently that uh, somebody in my circle of best friends has cancer. Again, it's not good news. Yeah. And so I immediately felt yeah, I don't know how much longer I have her, which broadened out into, wow, what am I doing? This is my love relationship. And it keeps going to this place. When he called me the next time, I was a thousand percent in my heart. And I picked up the phone instead of saying hello. I said, I love you. And he immediately shifted, right? Yes. Yes. And so did our relationship. Yes. So I have some experience of what's possible. We're all doing that. We just don't usually don't realize we're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't do it consistently. Exactly. Because the key is what happens when something else comes up and you've just been in this beautiful soup and then all of a sudden, bang, you're back into that situation. It's a little contentious. Yeah. Tell me about this Jedi way of really (laughs) creating a shift. So the other person responds. Well, that you mentioned, you know, we just alluded to the key. The key is in, this is a natural place for us to go physically and emotionally. It is not a familiar place Hmm. because we are born this way and it gets conditioned out of us, even with the best of childhoods, which let's face it, most of us haven't had the best of childhoods in one way or another, right? Mm -hmm. And even if you had a great childhood, you, you know, it, it gets tamped down. It gets controlled. You know, don't be so loud. Don't be so joyful. You know, uh, mental health experts call it your upper limit. You know, that kind of when you got too excited or too joyful, shh, you know, don't, right? Like you would, so that's the best case scenario versus abuse and trauma and neglect and all the other things. But it is an innate to us, this ability. And so what I started figuring out is how it feels differently in my body to be in home frequency versus ego frequency. And I'll take you on a little guided thing in a minute to show you, but just to kind of illuminate how this works is that, you know, it is not, we, I also get into in quantum love, you know, all the different ways to shift because what you alluded to is like, you know, what we, what Michael Singer, I don't know if you've ever spoken to him, but yeah, I love him so much. He talks about, um, the thorns, right? He, I love that idea of a thorn. You know, when you talk, when you were a kid and touched a cactus, like we all did at some point, at least most of us did, I did, you know, you pull all the thorns out that you can see, but then later on you touch something and it hurts. There are those microscopic thorns that you can't see. And, you know, we are all covered in emotional thorns. And so when we have this kind of triggered reaction to someone, it's because one of those thorns are being touched, right? So yeah, you move into home frequency, you're in this yummy soup, as you say, and then guaranteed, you're going to get triggered again. Guaranteed, like all the time. It's happening all the time. So if you can just stay in home frequency 51% of the time, your entire life will change. If you can start noticing when you're moving in out of home frequency, and get back into it sooner, your whole life will change. And if you move into home frequency and match it with the energy of your intention, let's say you're gonna have a difficult conversation with your partner or you're going on a date or you're even stepping into an important meeting, when you match the energy, this is the place where the secret often goes wrong for people. You can write yourself a check for a million dollars, but a million dollars is not gonna show up unless your energetic frequency is that of a person who already has a million dollars. 
And that is the secret behind the secret. Your energetic frequency has to match your intention. And so um, I start, one of the best ways that I have to teach us, I'll take you through it now if you want. Um, and everyone, you know, listening and watching can do it too. Although obviously not if you're driving because you need to close your eyes. But, you know, if you just kind of close your eyes, which helps you sort of ground and grounding is super important. I suggest doing this all the time, especially for someone like me who's rarely in her body. Um, so you take some deep breaths and you imagine as you breathe in whatever light, whatever color appeals to you right now flowing in through the top of your head and flowing through all of your cells. And as you breathe out, it goes out your tailbone, deep, deep, deep into the earth and spreading out like roots of a tree. And like a tree, your roots, your grounding should be double the width of your branches reach, right? So if you're gonna be speaking on a world stage, you're gonna wanna root again and again really wide. If you're gonna have an intimate dinner with your partner, you root a little differently, right? But taking a couple of breaths like that because we are energetic, electrical beings, we want to ground our energy. And then after you've taken some deep breaths and grounded yourself, this is the easiest way to show you how it feels. Um, imagine, think of a time in your life, just the first thing that occurs to you, there's no wrong answer, when you felt unadulterated, unequivocal joy, unconditional love, unconditional excitement and acceptance. Maybe it was when you walked down the aisle or kissed your beloved for the first time or held your baby for the first time or finished that big race, whatever comes to mind. And, the, and you know, you can play with different scenarios, but just for the sake of example, let's follow this one. And go there in your mind's eye as if it is happening right here, right now, it is a reality in this now moment. And imagine employing all of your senses, smell, hearing, taste, vision, but you're not watching yourself in that scene, you are in the scene. So if you're holding the baby, you can see the baby in your arms, you can smell it, you can feel it, right? So you are there in first person as if it's happening right here, right now. And that is really important because your body and your brain don't know the difference between reality and rehearsal. So what you're doing now is moving your body into the energetic frequency of that scenario that you're bringing to mind. And then as you're there for, you know, just for the sake of time, a few seconds, you can do this as long as you want. Um, notice what you feel in your body. Notice what you feel in your chest. A lot of people report kind of a spreading or a bubbling in their chest a relaxing of their shoulders, a flowing through their system. You know, everyone experiences something different, but notice that. And then when you're ready, you can blink your eyes open. So did you notice a difference in how it felt in your body to be in that scenario in first person? A thousand percent. My whole chest was wide open. And it was a glorious experience. I kind of didn't want to come back. <laughs> I and I call that the open hearted meditation mm -hmm. for that reason, because it is when you walk around with that open heart, that is the ultimate energetic frequency that's going to create what you want in every aspect of your life. And so when you choose a scenario, you know, let's say you want your partner to be more romantic, right? You imagine a time, a scenario where they were really romantic or you make one up, doesn't matter. You go there in first person, you set that intention to create more romance, to call in more romance, and you're literally putting that out there to the quantum field. And then if you hold that frequency in the presence of your partner, they literally have no choice but to match you. They don't even know what's happening. That's why it's like a Jedi mind trick because, I mean, you can tell them what's happening, but if you didn't, they wouldn't know. They would just know it feels really good to be with you and I'm feeling really romantic right now. Hmm. Do you have a success story around this, a client or a group that was using mm -hmm. this, that there was a huge life shift? Oh, I have so many and I talk about a lot of them in the book. Let me see if I can think of one in particular who, you know, just along the lines of what we're saying, who was really frustrated because every New Year's Eve, 
they had little kids and every New Year's Eve, it was like up to her to make the big hubaloo. And now the kids were getting older and she got that she needed to stay home with them and so did the husband. But it was like a symptom of a much larger sense of feeling like she was doing all the work to make life fun. Mm. And she had been tired of nagging her partner and talking to him. She didn't want to make a whole thing on New Year's Eve, but she was feeling really resentful. And we'd been talking about these things. And so I kind of coached her through the process. Okay, design in your mind's eye, like the, what would be the most fun, most playful, most exciting, fun at home New Year's Eve the four of you could spend together. And she sort of came up with this scenario and she moved into the home frequency and she sent me an email later, which I share in the book, where she told me about it and she was saying, I was staring out the window, I was feeling really sorry for myself and then I moved myself into, you know, into this scenario and the next thing I know, he's, go he's running out to do an errand with the kids and he comes back with like bags and bags from the a drugstore of silly string and streamers and all this stuff. He'd been just inspired to go and get all of this stuff. And it turned into this amazing New Year's Eve, right? I've had stepmothers who have a really hard time with their stepkids mm -hmm. moving into, imagine these scenarios where they're all happy around the table, where they're feeling heard and understood. And what happens is, especially with those that we're close to, we now know we've been able to measure our energetic frequency up to 30 feet. It reaches and probably much further. That's just what we've been able to measure. But people who are in close relationships and spending a lot of time together, our atoms, which we're made of, are entangled. It's called quantum entanglement. So we're entrained to one another. We match each other even more strongly. Mm -hmm. We stay matched. When two atoms are entangled, they're spinning in exactly the same angle and direction and speed. And if I took one to China, and turned it the other direction, the other would simultaneously turn the other direction. And they're seeing this in the research with couples. They, there's all kinds of interesting research out there that is showing how strange we are to each other, which is a blessing and a curse because if you're not holding your own frequency, <coughs> if you're not holding your own frequency, you're just matching your, that's why when you walk in the room, you know your partner's in a bad mood before you even see them, right? Or you're thinking of someone and all of a sudden they call. Yes, I'm talking about entrainment and how we're so entangled with one another in our love relationships. They've even done this. Yeah, I remember this University of Washington study where they took couples in a loving relationship and they took one to one part of the building and the other to the other. And when they shined a light in one's eyes, the ocular receptors in the brain of the other lit up. You know, we are so, our heart rates synchronize, our bodies synchronize. We are so much more synchronized than we know. We take in 40 billion bits of information into our brains every millisecond and only consciously process 2,000 of them. Mm -hmm. So there's all of this unconscious connection and reaction going on that we have no idea about. And this is part of, the, of, of that, you know, the quantum love piece. Well, you said that there is no such thing as a sexpiration date anymore, which I love. That's a great meme right there. So how can we enjoy active, passionate sex well into our golden years? Yeah, I mean, look, as long as you can walk up two flights of stairs without chest pains and shortness of breath, um, you know, you're in good enough shape to have sex. And sex is such an important part of health and I mean, from the immune system to cardiovascular to depression, anxiety, I mean, everything is so good for, for your body, but also uh, for your heart and for your relationship. And so now that we're living such healthy lives and thanks to modern medical technology, you know, people can have sex until they die. And it's, it's when it's working in a relationship, it's one important part of the working relationship. It's when it's not working that it can really start to cause a disconnection but the good news is that um yeah you can be there's no expiration there's no sexpiration date on your sex life and it can always get better it can always be improved upon i mean i have clients that are in their 80s i have them in their teens you know all ages uh, is there a reason why sex dies off i would think hormones can be one reason, sure. uh, certainly the emotional connection or disconnection could be another reason. Are there yeah. other reasons why sex wanes, um, boredom? You know, I sort of categorize it. Like when, when, when you have someone who, when sex is sort of dis, you know, 
disintegrated, it's usually because one or both of you have low desire, right? That's kind of the umbrella term. But that low desire could be caused by a million different things. Mm -hmm. And there are kind of three categories of those million different things, emotional ones like body image, mm -hmm. trauma history, abuse history, anxiety, depression, you know, those kinds of things can affect not only your response, but your interest. Those are kind of the emotional factors. Then there are the medical physical factors, medications you're on, aging and perimenopause or andropause in men where our hormones are starting to decline and our sexual function and interest starts to decline as well, or it can, uh, physically at least. Um, medications we're on, uh, medical conditions like diabetes or heart disease, um, so that's in kind of the physical realm. And then there's the relational realm. And they all interact with each other non-linearly, in a non-linear way, right? So non-linearly, I just made up a word. But, um, you know, like let's say you have a woman who's gone into menopause and now her desire is lower. It's now impacting her partner and their relationship. And now her partner's withdrawn from her and she's that much less inspired to be sexual. And so it kind of, I, I look at these things like a picture puzzle where there are all these different pieces in the emotional, physical and relational realm. And you want to just address them all at once or as quick, you know, as together as possible because they all impact each other. Hmm. So is there something that you know about we don't <laughs> if you could tell us, yeah. you could really have an amazing sex life. Yeah. Something, even if it's really cutting edge, but that would open us up to having an experience we didn't dream we could. Well, I mean, I don't know if there's one thing, but I can tell you several things that can really impact your sex life positively, right? One is the use it or lose it phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Sexual response is all, it's about hormones and it's about blood flow. And if you aren't, you know, getting aroused regularly, um, and that doesn't mean you have to have a partner to do that, then things start to atrophy. They start to harden, just like the rest of, you know, if you don't exercise, your arteries harden, right? So it's the same thing. So you definitely, the more you use it, the more response you have. It's the same thing for prostate health. Men who have regular sex have healthier prostates mm -hmm. than men who don't. So it's good to have regular sexual release, whether that's by yourself or with a partner. The other is to really, you know, anything that supports blood flow and hormonal health is going to support your sex life. If you are over 40, embrace, embrace, embrace the sex toy because <laughs> you are going to need added stimulation. There is nothing wrong with it. Only 30% of women as it is reach orgasm through intercourse. And that's Thank usually... Very much. Yes, and that's usually because they're getting simultaneous clitoral stimulation. And as we move into our late 30s and 40s, because testosterone is starting to decline, we have less genital sensation. And so we need even more already as it is your average male. If you're talking about heterosexual couples, your average male takes about seven and a half minutes to reach orgasm and your average woman takes 20. So that's with an otherwise healthy, you know, younger couples under 59, right? So we already have an orgasm gap happening where lots more foreplay is needed to kind of move her along to get to the same point, right? Where his orgasm doesn't happen almost 15 minutes before hers. Because um, unless he can get things working again, she's in, you know, she's not in great shape. But when you use a sex toy and there are small ones that can fit in between the two of you, um, then you're adding that clitoral stimulation that not only closes the gap, makes things more exciting. I mean, I think there's so many things. The main reason that I think sex starts to decline besides the physical reasons is because it's just like been there, done that. You're in a routine. I do this to you. You do this to me. We know it works. Okay, good night. la -di da You know, you're done. And it gets boring after a while. And so, you know, I'll have couples make a fantasy box where they write down all the fantasies they'd like to act out together um, and share them with a promise not to judge. Doesn't mean they have to agree to everything, but they come up with a common list that they can agree on. They put them on little pieces of paper in a box. And then once a month or twice a month, depending on how adventurous you want to be, you pull one out and the ones who fan whose fantasy it was kind of sets up the scenario. Um, and I think you have to, if you have kids, you have to schedule sex or you will not be having sex because if you wait for it to happen spontaneously, um, it won't. If you can foster appreciation 
and connection in your relationship, that does huge amounts, especially for women's libido, because we are in large part in long-term relationships inspired to want to be sexual because we feel close to someone that we're going to have sex with. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about men, they feel close to someone through the act of sex primarily. Mm -hmm. So if for women, we feel really emotionally close, like sex is part of it. But for us, it's the cuddling, talking, sharing, spending time together. You know, that's all great for men, but that comes as a secondary to sex. And so if you keep your sex life going and if you try to have sex, even if you'd rather be doing another thing on your to-do list, you find that you enjoy it and it nurtures the connection between the two of you. And then, of course, there's quantum sex, which I have a chapter on in Quantum Love, which I really love. And that's once you start um, playing with your body's energy, you can start moving because sexual energy is like really high frequency, high manifesting energy. And... I, you know, ha I teach women often about the sexual manifestation meditation. So like if you're self-stimulating, you can actually move yourself into an intention of some, anything you want to create in the world. And then your arousal and orgasm helps kind of cement that. Um, so it's really a cool way to do a little manifesting meditation, but you will feel, especially for women, I mean, I had people do this, men and women, through self-stimulation first, because it's much harder to do when you're taking another partner into account. But as you feel that sexual energy and stimulation, just the sensation, which is a kind of energy, you can imagine pulling that up. So you're breathing that up just to your pelvis, you know, in the flooding your pelvis and then breathing it out, and then breathing it up, and breathing it out. You can move it all the way up your body. You can do what the Taoists call the microcosmic orbit, where it goes up your back and over your front. You can play with the tantric techniques, where you're exchanging energy with your partner, and you're creating a circle. But as you start to play with this, and you're aware of it, it's amazing. Seven chakra orgasms, what can happen? Oh my God, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. I'll have some of that, please. So fun. Wow. <laughs> that really sounds orgasmic. It is. In concept. I am um, super psyched to find out more. We're going to come back in just a minute. You are listening to Dare to Dream radio and podcast watching as well. You can become part of the Dare to Dream podcast team by donating to the show at patreon.com slash dare to dream. You have a big purpose to fulfill, so I ask, what would you do if you knew that you could not fail? What would it take for you to feel completely free and bold in your life? Dare to Dream is always going to be free to you, and we welcome your support of the show at patreon.com slash dare to dream. It helps us take care of the many business aspects that it takes to run this business and allows me to bring on the best quality guests. So for $1 or more, you can make a difference. This is podcast number one transformation conversation. Go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. And if you're just tuning in after we've started, I'm Debbie Dashinger. This is Dare to Dream. I'm interviewing Dr. Laura Berman at drlauraberman.com. So I want to pick up a little bit. You mentioned toys. Mm-hmm. I've been experimenting uh, yeah. and I, I, I purchase stuff and some, some of them work and some of them don't. I just recently got a Sonic. There's Sonic Waves. Yeah. For me, like, I, I couldn't figure it out. Many gimmicks. Uh, yeah. And, you know, what people usually do is they go into the store or online or they look at reviews and they're like, what's the best vibrator out there? And it's something with... 20 buttons and ticklers and ears and rotating things and you know and or what i see often happen you know especially in couples you know in heterosexual couples is because m males and females feel very differently about what's appealing sex toy wise so historically although that's rapidly starting to change males have been the main purchasers of sex toys and then they're thinking like a guy what would i want if i were a woman oh i want the biggest most realistic thing you know so he comes home with this giant <laughs> dildo you know that's bigger than his arm you know and thinks that's going to be what stimulates her clitoris i mean i so 
So it's really important to know, you know, what you're trying, like I, I actually have a line. Did you know I have a line? I'll send you a care package. I have a line of sexual aids and devices. Oh. And they are designed oh, for women. And there are all different purposes. You know, I sort of like, I, I liked, and I have a little quiz that I, you know, give women, but I'll ask them, you know, are you, because if you're interested in having a G spot orgasm, you're going to want one sort of toy. If you're looking to have an orgasm during sex or up your arousal, you're going to want another. If you're looking to spice it up, maybe another, you know, so there are different toys for different purposes. Um, but they're definitely worth exploring. I actually now am creating two new products that I'm so excited about. One is, it's sort of started as a sexual healing line for women who have either sexual trauma or really want to release toxic past relationships that they feel are still kind of stuck on them. And on an energetic level, they kind of are. When women in particular have intercourse, you know, you're taking that energy into you. Um, so there is an energetic hangover of sorts to sex. Um, so I actually, well, first a rose quartz wand because rose quartz absorbs energy and it's the frequency of love. And so I have a whole guided meditation that comes with it where you take a bath in this beautiful sea salt bath and you kind of create the sacred space and you um, use the wand to absorb any negative energy. I've had such an amazing response with the women that have used it, mostly women who have had sexual trauma, but I think it can be great for any woman. And then I also have a, a product called Yoni Silk because I've been so mad that there are no really amazing lubricants that are completely organic and natural because your vagina and your anus or your rectum are mucous membranes. So that's like your, the inside of your mouth. You know, it's absorbent <laughs> tissue. I want to give an addendum here for people who don't understand the import of what you're saying, that the majority of things we know and products, name products we know out there that we are supposed to use to put inside and outside of our bodies have things that go into car radiators yes. and chemicals that are so detrimental to our bodies. And metals and carcin things that have, are carcinogenic. But, um, you know, it's bad enough that we put that on our skin, right? But putting it in your mucous membranes, like the inside of your mouth, the inside of your nose, the inside of your eyes, your rectum and your vagina are you know, it's so much more absorbent than your skin itself. Those mucous membranes are. So it has been driving me crazy. I've been a huge proponent of anyone who will listen to me of just, okay, forget the over-the-counter lubricants, just use organic coconut oil that you would cook, cook with. Like, that's great. So what I did is I created, the base is organic fractionated coconut oil, but it also has Damiana, vitamin E, a heavy dose of CBD, and it is amazing. It is, it's called Yoni Silk. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so I'm always kind of creating products that I want and know that mostly for women, but obviously women in all kinds of relationships. But I, I, uh, I really try to cater to our population because we've been so underserved when it comes to really optimizing our sex life in a healthy way. You're creating sexual alchemy. Yeah, baby, uh, sexual alchemy. I love this. And you mentioned also that there's products that we can use during intercourse. And I'm fascinated by that because it's kind of hard. When you've got yeah. two bodies, well, you could be facing different ways, but you've got two bodies. So, you know, right. how do you get well, equipment in there? Even, you know, if you're flush against each other, obviously it's hard. But even if you're, there's some distance between you, you know, we could get technical here, but missionary position or the woman, you know, you on top or spooning or doggy style. I mean, there's a million different ways where you could have access to your clitoris. Mm -hmm. But um, so the two that I find in just speaking from my line, but it could, you know, you can find anything. You want something small. So like I have one called uh, the Athena, which is a very small cylinder. They're all named after goddesses, a very small cylinder kind of uh, vibrator. So it just is for external use on the labia and clitoris and around the urethra. And so your partner can be inside you and it, depending on your position, you can use it. You or your partner could use it on your clitoris. The other one that is really popular um, for couples during intercourse is uh, the Aurora, which is a hands-free 
uh, it's like a little silicone uh, holster, for lack of a better word, a ring with a holster on top that a vibrating bullet can slide into. And then the ring goes around the penis. So the vibrator is at the base of the penis, the vibrating bullet with a remote control. <laughs> and so as you're in, you know, up against each other and, and he's penetrating, the vibrator is up against your clitoris. And what is your feeling about things like a Sibian or a motor bunny? Do you th think those are positive and effective? I mean, everyone's different. It's, uh, it's fine to try. I mean, I'll always think of Howard Stern when I think of <laughs> <laughs> well, It was Carmen Electra, right? <laughs> God, is she a brave woman. Yeah, I know. I mean, look, if you're into it and you want to, I think there's only, this is what I, you know, people are always, I speak all over the country, all over the world, and the most common question I get in every audience is, you know, how do we spice it up? Which is a really important question. But, you know, what, I'm tr what I tell them is, look, I can and I will and I'm happy to and I've written lots of books on, you know, I could give you 365 toys, positions, fantasies, role plays, kinky things to try to spice it up. And in a year or two, a year and a half, you'll be back to me asking for more. And so I think all of those things are great. Have fun, play with them. But that is not what we're really looking for when we're looking to spice it up yeah. is intensity. Yeah, it's the sense of intensity at, that we're looking for because things start to feel a little boring, predictable, right? So we think, oh, if we increase the, the unknown, right? If we, if we do something that's either really taboo or we've never done before, that's true. It will create more dopamine in your brain. It will create more excitement. But when you really focus on the energetic piece, you can't help but be aroused. I mean, my husband, God bless him. I do experiments without him knowing all the time. And I remember when in the early days, I was thinking, you know, and I'll sometimes do experiments for both of us. Sometimes I'll do one just to see what happens to him. And on this occasion, I was bringing energy. I decided to bring energy and light through the top of my head, through down through my chakras and out my vagina into his penis. And I was just breathing that energy through and breathing that energy through just because I wanted to, you know, I was just curious and I was having fun. And it, But the last thing that occurred to me, which was kind of stupid of me, is that not only would he feel it, um, which he did. I mean, he doesn't know what's happening. I call him Senor Root Chakra because he doesn't even believe in this stuff, but he's always at the effect of it. And, um, but I could not believe what happened inside me because basically I was bringing light all through my body and like, oh, I think what was, I was just like totally opening these channels. I was just focused on what was going to happen to him. And the next thing I know, you know, I'm swinging from the chandelier. So, <laughs> So I mean, he was enjoying it too, or I'll make, you know, th so there's all these things you can play oh, with wow. inside your body and moving that energy that creates what we're trying to create with the Sibian or the next crazy sex toy or whatever it is that we're trying to do, which are I, nothing wrong with those, but that will only take you so far. Speaking of fantasies that you put in a box and pick out from, I have one I haven't executed yet, but I'm very excited. What I want, well, my boyfriend and I met at a really nice restaurant bar near where I live for the first time. And I want to, without him knowing, invite him back there to meet me. Except what he doesn't know is I'm going to walk in as though I have no idea who he is. Ah. And introduce myself and sit down with him as though we are on our first date. Yes. Whatever. Yeah. Yes. But, I, and I have, are you going to go in disguise? Are you going to be someone else? Or are you going to be you as if you first met? Great question. I'm totally going to be me. Okay. Except I have mad designs about how that first date is going to go. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Good. I have a tendency to date in a very reserved way. Um, but so this is going to be a very, you're, you're not in this like, oh, I can't come on too strong because he might, you're not having any of that energy. You can be like a total, I, I, I'm so attracted to you. I want to take you home and tear your pants off. Exactly. And then I will. <laughs> then I'm sure that's how the night will end. But I'm very excited because I'm sure he'll be baffled at first about what's going on and where, where are you coming from. But then, and then he'll play along. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. See, that's the kind of stuff 
that keeps things interesting. And you don't have to do that every week or every day or every date, but just, you know, once in a while. Yeah. Up. Even thinking about it makes me very excited. So yeah, the execution will just be the cherry. And you mentioned also tantric sex. I am obsessed, but I've never done it, but I would oh, love to. Teach to. Some. Yeah, absolutely. I, I teach women that all the, and men that all the time, but here's it. You want a little easy one that you can play with a little experiment. Of course, yes. uh, you know, one of the basic tantric principles is that men uh, achieve, uh, kind of take sexual energy in through their penises mm -hmm. and share it through their hearts mm -hmm. and women take that energy in through our hearts and then we share it through our genitals. It's like what I was saying before that we're inspired when we feel that closeness and connection, right? So our energy comes in like this and goes out and theirs comes in through the genitals and goes out through the heart. So when you're having intercourse and it's easiest to do if you're face to face at first, you can start imagining because where attention goes energy flows you'll start to realize this when you play with it and you imagine the energy you know coming from his heart into yours and you sharing it through your genitals into his and then it's circling up around out his heart into yours you can also do soul gazing so even before you have sex you sit in what's called the yab yum position, if you're comfortable enough, where like in your case, he, the larger partner or him in this case, the male would sit with his back against, you know, the wall or the headboard or whatever. Um, and then you straddle him. Okay. And you don't even, you can even sit face to face cross-legged before you even get sexual, but you can do this during intercourse, right? So you're on top of him. He, you know, sitting on top of him. And then you stare into each other's left eye, the mm -hmm. eye above your partner's heart. Mm -hmm. And you stare deeply, deeply, deeply into that eye while you place your uh, hand over their heart. Mm -hmm. And so each of you have a hand on each other's heart and you're looking into the eye above the heart and then you're synchronizing your breath. And your heart rates will start to synchronize. And then you can add on the circling energy at the same time, right? So once you get the soul gazing down, then build in that circling energy on top of it. And it's quite something. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. I'm feeling it already. That's <laughs> <laughs> Right. So that's the kind of intensity I'm talking about, right? That's not necessarily Sibian intensity, which would last mm. one or two times and then you know, been there, done that, right? This is a different kind of intensity and each time is different, you know, and it feels different and you can play with it. You can do the soul gazing, you know, before you even start fooling around. And you'll notice that when you do fool around, the connection and the intensity between the two of you is so much deeper because especially for women, because it takes us a while. We say that if like men are a microwave oven, women are slow burn and stove, uh -huh. it takes us a while to kind of, <laughs> stop our multitasking minds and get present, you know? And if you do this beforehand, you're skipping all of that because you're really present. That's beautiful. Because I don't like to be called a crock pot. No. You're a slow burning stove. <laughs> Got to be stoked. You know, they can go from zero to 60 really fast when there's the opportunity. And, you know, I always say to men who complain that their partner, you know, they're ready and their partners, I'm like, you got to keep her at a 30 mm -hmm. all week long emotionally and energetically so that when there's the opportunity, it's not such a distance for her to get to 60. This is so huge because for somebody like me, whose love language is verbal affirmation and mm -hmm. physical touch, mm -hmm. that doesn't exist. If it's, I love, by the way, when you said you were so attracted to your husband, you fell in love with him because he was so smart. Yes. I so get that. And also, for me to be with somebody so smart, sometimes they're so in their head, there's a disconnect here. And to not, for me, to not have my partner forget, like, you must keep talking to me because, man, it's going to show up in the bedroom. Or if you're physically mm -hmm. affectionate, let me tell you, it's mm -hmm. like a 401k plan. You know, you're going to make sure what you want is going to happen. And what I love about what you're saying, which is the most important thing, is that you understand what you need and you're able to articulate it and ask for it. And that's 90% of the game. And then, you know, it's like, I don't know if you ever have had pets, and I don't mean to compare men to dogs, 
but you know, it is like a training because mm -hmm. if it is something that doesn't come naturally to him, when he does talk to you or when he does, not that he doesn't talk to you, but when he's making an effort to talk a lot or cuddle or touch in the ways you like, you not only ooh and ah and appreciate it verbally, mm -hmm. but like you sexually reward as well. Because part of the, what will happen, like I was saying earlier, there's this sex romance stalemate, right? So he probably doesn't even get to talking and, sorry, let me just let the dog stop. Are those men dogs too? Are those boys? They're not very well trained. <laughs> I've met them. Yeah. So he'll start um, being more touchy and talkative through the act of having sex. Then he feels more attuned to you and close to you. So my guess is after you've had sex, he's probably a lot more talkative and cuddly than ironically before you have sex, which is when you need it the most. Mm. You understand? So he's so the more sex you have, the more he's going to be inspired to talk and touch. The more he talks and touches, the more you're going to be inspired to be sexual. Yes. This is this is very important how it can work together or yeah. not. Yes. Okay. And you mentioned 30% of people having orgasm through intercourse, but that's a majority of even that 30%, they're being stimulated during intercourse. Um, I've always been jealous of the few women I know who can actually, you know, it's like, <laughs> why have oral sex? You know, it's so great. I, I have an orgasm. It's like, God, that must be amazing. Yes. I'm not one of those. But, but are there ways to actually turn that around so that can occur? Yeah. And I think, you know, look, an orgasm is an orgasm. If you can have one, there's no bad orgasm. And it's certainly when I did the research on what the most sexually satisfied women, I did national research with Rand on what the most sexual, sexually satisfied, satisfied women had in common. It wasn't even the orgasms they had. It was the intimacy and connection they felt with the person they were having sex with mm -hmm. that predicted the most for how satisfied with the sexual encounter they, uh, they were. But um, certainly, lots and lots of foreplay first. So if you're wanting to have an, an orgasm during intercourse, what you're looking for is uh, G-spot stimulation, right? So first you wanna figure out how to have a G-spot orgasm on your own. And the G-spot is about a third of the way into the vagina on the belly button side. Okay. Um, and so you get, you know, so I have like, we were talking about my line earlier, I have G-spot stimulators in there, which are kind of curved, right? So it's like a vibrating dildo that's curved at the end because it hits that spot in the vagina. So, um, you figure that out on your own, either with a vibrator or with your fingers. You do that kind of come here motion, but in reverse on yourself. You, if you know you're in the right spot because the G spot is right next to the urethra. So very often when you are in the right spot, you'll feel like a little bit of the need to pee. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a sign that you're in the right spot, assuming you've actually peed recently. <laughs> Otherwise, you might just have to pee. Um, and so you stimulate that. You figure out how to give yourself a G-spot orgasm. And then you bring it into the relationship with your partner. And, um, and so because once you figure it out for yourself, you can understand really the best position, if you're talking about heterosexual intercourse for a G-spot orgasm, is what we call the coital alignment technique or the cat. So mm -hmm. if you imagine like the missionary position, he's, she's on, uh, he's on top and she's on the bottom, right? And there's penetration. And then he kind of lifts, lifts up and forward so that the base of the penis is against the clitoris and the pelvic bone. And then he doesn't do this. He doesn't you know, go in and out. He's rocking back and forth, keeping that pelvic contact. Wow. Oh my God. I'll be checking. Well, that, you got, I gotta send you a care package. You gotta read my book, Loving Sex. It's a book for couples in a loving relationship, all sorts of ways to have G-spot orgasms, to spice things up, to do all of that kind of positions, illustrations, all that good stuff. Oh, yum. And just so my listeners are clear, you do you teach a tantric workshop? I teach all of it. I do. In fact, um, I just recently uh, in May did an Ecstasy Unleashed weekend for women mm. in Venice, California, you know, in LA, 
where I taught a group of women all about Tantra, accessing the divine feminine, feminine, quantum sex, all of that. I love to teach that. So I do workshops all the time. I do private groups. I, you know, I love teaching that. I do videos on it. I do courses on it. Yeah. Okay. So there's so much available. Where can people hear your radio show? Uh, it's called Uncovered Radio with Dr. Laura Berman. It's all over the country, syndicated on terrestrial regular radio. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's like in 55 or so markets. Um, so it may or may not be playing near you. You can go to, if you go to my website, Dr. Laura Berman, you can find the link under radio. Or you can go to uncoveredradio.com. And you can get, um, you know, the best of show, the in case you missed it show you can listen to it live streaming you know so there are lots of ways to listen to it online if it's not playing in your area and people can call into your show yeah you can call in even if you don't get the show in your area it's one of my favorite things about doing the show because everybody always has a question right and if you don't get whether you listen to the radio show live in your area or on online or whatever you can call um, 855 uncover anytime, day or night, the phone lines are always open. And if you don't get me, um, they will call you back and get you on the show. That's yeah. Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. So folks, if you want to connect with her live or otherwise, you've got the number now and you could do so. And Dr. Laura, this is Dare to Dream. Yes. So what are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, um, my future goal uh, that I'm actually putting into action now is to really start creating more video content because I've mostly concentrated on written and everybody keeps asking me for more videos. So I'm doing more videos, but my big dream is to really start creating a much larger active live streaming community around sexual pleasure and quantum love and sexual health. I want to start doing events and um, speaking events and women's events that are that you can attend digitally as well as in person. Um, I'm going to pick your brain about that actually because I think you're going to want to play with me in this space. But that is actually, you know, I really want what I teach to be available to everyone, whether you can pay for therapy or not, you know, whether you want to read a book or not. I mean, I, I'll never forget I was doing this huge event at. Kripalu, and I was doing it with, um, it was me, Gabby Bernstein, and Teal Swan, oh. and there were 400 women there, and many of them were coming up to me in between saying, oh my gosh, we had no idea, most of them were under 35, um, we have no idea who you were, and um, you know, where can we find you? And I was like, well, you know, cause I'm not, I used to do the Oprah show and all that stuff where they saw, you know, where their moms probably saw me and they maybe saw me, but now, I'm like, well, I've written nine books and they're like, well, no videos, we can't find videos. Mm -hmm. And so I'm realizing that, you know, it took after that, I realized it took me a while to get my act together that, you know, there's a huge population of people that really need this information and just digest it that way. So I really want to create more content for them as well. Awesome. How, how exciting. And I'm excited to see your journey in that. Uh, absolutely. What is a ritual? What is a practice that you use daily that keeps you grounded, that keeps you allowing and receiving the things you really yeah. desire most? I really, I meditate. I do transcendental meditation. Oh, I want to say every day, but I'd be lying almost every day. I try to every day. Um, that has really changed my life. I've been doing that for about 10 years. Um, I ground myself in the way that I showed you earlier, constantly, not necessarily with the visualization, just ground, 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 because I do tend to just forget about my body and be all in my head all the time. Um, I have started and it has really shifted so many things beautifully in my life to really cultivate the creative more. So even though I am by no means an artist, I am painting, I'm making terrariums, I'm, you know, making all jewelry, I'm doing all of these things with, you know, rather than watching the latest HGTV show or whatever it is with the kids that they're watching, you know, I go and do something like that and it has really opened up a lot of ch creative channels for me in other areas of my work and life and I'm really grateful that I've been investing some time in that. So that's been a newer 
policy. Oh, and I make it a point really, really important, especially for women to spend time with other women. Um, and so I have it all, I mean, I, this has been probably for 20 years, at least once a week, penned into my schedule is an hour or more with a soul teacher friend who I love, where I get not to be mom, wife, therapist, and can just be a dork and connect and our divine feminine that's really important for our energy stores um those are probably my mainstays beautiful thank you so much for coming on the show and i'm going to pre-invite you we do this again because a zillion more directions we can go in and questions i know and you'll come on mine too i would love that thank you dr laura i'm going to end the show with a quote from Dr. Laura Berman, which is, let your love of connection become greater than your fear of rejection. Next week on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Brandi Gilmore, whose expertise is on how to heal yourself after making her own astonishing recovery, healing herself from wheelchair-bound chronic pain to pain-free normal functioning, Brandy, who's just beautiful, you can't even imagine the photos of her when she was in the wheelchair and who she is today. My goodness, she's generating attention worldwide on her revolutionary and miraculous methods for how you can get out of any pain, emotional, physical, spiritual, mental, in record time. Tune in for this transformation conversation next week. Subscribe to Dare to Dream so it goes right into your inbox. Give us a review. Go to youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. And also we're in all the major podcast sites. You can subscribe and receive these every week. Thanks for joining us today. And remember that the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place.